Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to a new short but sweet tutorial today on something that will help every single one of you, no matter what level you are. Because we're going to talk about flat water blasting and how to really, really, really fly. So you know, sometimes I like to tease you guys a bit before I give you the information. Well, today I'm gonna give you the secret right up front so you can decide whether you want to stick around. The secret to how to really make your board fly over the water is to learn to balance speed versus control. Speed versus control. We're gonna go through gear, skills, and training in this video. And it's all gonna revolve around speed versus control. Check this out. The less board you have touching the water, the less friction, but also the less control you have. The more board you have touching the water, the more control you will have, but also less speed. You know, in the end, your gear, your skills, and your training will determine your success in really, really, really flying. So you're gonna learn to balance speed versus control with me. Okay, so now let's get right into it. Now keep in mind that your gear setup has a lot to do with your stance. The idea with flat water blasting is to move your stance rearward as your speed increases and your speed will increase as you move rearward. When you move your stance to the back the nose will rise off the water and the board rides with less friction as it's mostly on the tail. Of course at some point if there's barely any board in the water then it will, will become too uncontrollable for anyone. So you kind of have to find a sweet spot and especially a sweet spot for your skill level. To get the board flying more you need to set it up further towards the rear and I have my board right here. I took the foot straps off so you can see the different hole positions. This is a slalom board obviously. A free ride board would have another option further towards inside and um, what I mean by setting it up further rearward is simply to bring the mass base further back. You know the mass base is uh, it's very sensitive. I typically only move it by half a centimeter forth and back. Other than that I usually have the same position and as you can see Starboard also made the mass base way way smaller because all the mass bases are too long so there is no way that anyone is going to put his base all the way forward like that on on a board with a standard sized mass base so this one right here is much shorter and i would still never go this far uh, forward so that's just not an option and then uh, bring the foot straps further back uh, this is my small slalom board so i typically have the back strap all the way in the back and all my slalom boards as far back as i can go so that would be those two holes right here as you can see with those foot straps and then in the front foot strap i wouldn't go all the way back because this is a small board so um, you do need some control and uh, what i would do typically is um, go in either this or this hole and that gives me a relatively wide stance so i have a lot of control i still can make the board fly a lot by shifting my weight further backward but um, i still have the control by you know standing far enough forward if i want to and, and pushing my weight further forward so then moving the foot strap further forward for example in the first hole uh, means that it would give you a lot more control and, and the board nose won't fly away as easily. So if your level is not so high yet, you would typically need to start with the foot straps further inboard. On a free ride board you have that option, but the goal is to learn to ride with the foot straps outboard as you can see here, um, so that your heels approach the board from the side rather than from the top. We'll bring up this point again when we talk about skills. You're also going to need a good carbon fin. A good carbon fin is important so that you have proper flex and reflex and you can really rely on that fin when you stand on it as most of the pressure is gonna be on the fin and you will wanna drive the energy of the wind into the board and the fin. So once you have your gear set up, you have to develop the skills to use the gear. Remember, the secret is balancing speed and control. And if you improve your skill, you can have more speed because you're better with control. So how do you do it? As the board speed increases, you need to shift your body rearward, so further back. And the nose starts to come up and you're riding more on the tail and on the fin. And you need to pay close attention to your body tension. Your body is going to translate the power into the board and then and into the fin. So you have to be in control of the gear and not the gear in control of you. If your body is tense and rigid, then power will be transferred more directly into the board for speed. The idea is to keep pressure on the fin as steady as possible. If your body is loose and not under tension, you may not be transferring the power from the sail as directly. So again, there is a balance between speed and control. You also need to think about railing the board. This means allowing the windward rail to raise slightly by lifting the heels a little. And when the wind gets under the board, it helps you to fly over the chop. If you can fly above the chop, you'll be faster than if you're smashing through the chop. As we said earlier, your foot straps must be set in the outboard position so that your heels approach the board from the side. This helps a lot with smoothing out the chop. If your heels approach from the top of the board, 
then you'll bounce up and down as you fight through the chop. But if you're able to approach from the side, then you can control the board on the chop. And of course, as you can imagine, railing the board requires a lot of practice. Too much air under the board and you're gonna take a nasty crash. Kinda like this one. So guys, be gentle as you build the right muscle memory for this. And uh, yeah, during all the time, as I said, you need to keep a steady pressure on your fin and you need to keep that body tension. So you're leaning back and pulling the front foot on the, on the strap. The gust and the chop will be coming at you and your eyes need to be constantly scanning the water. So watch for changes in the surface texture. Uh, just, you know, look a little bit upwind in front of you so you can prepare for the gust. Because if you're not prepared, then a strong gust can disturb the board and yeah, eventually even make you crash. But a big gust could also increase your speed if you are prepared. In order to gain control, you may need to bring the nose down a little bit to not fly away. And apply more pressure on the mess base and um, bring the rail a little bit down and uh, just open the sail a little bit. So the less you disturb the board while doing all of this, the more speed you maintain. So we've talked about gear, we've talked about skills, but it's a lot of stuff to build into your muscle memory. And that brings us to talking about your training. As we know, windsurfing is a lot of fun. And you know, a lot of riders get to the water and they're having so much fun, they completely forget about having a training plan to improve your skills. If you want to improve faster, it's good to have a plan. Training is different than, you know, just going and riding. It's about focus fun versus free fun, if you will. Now, obviously you don't want to do all focus training and miss out on the free fun. So so I suggest doing 10 to 15 minutes warm up and then dedicate 20 to 30 minutes specific focused around training. And after that, you just go and have fun again. This 20 to 30 minutes window of specific intent will really help you improve more quickly. So for example, practice transitioning your body rearward as your speed increases. Slow down and then do it again. Do this 10 times. Practice raking the sail back and allowing the nose to rise. As you begin to ride on the tail, remember what it feels like. Slow down and do it 10 more times. So lift your heels a little and allow a little wind under the board. And as you feel like it gets too loose, bring it back under control. And then you can repeat this drill about 10 more times. Build a little training plan for yourself for each session. It doesn't have to be complicated. Just, uh, you know, make sure to write it down. Create a few skill exercises like I just mentioned and then keep it simple. And then when you're done with 20 or 30 minutes of focus training, just go back to having fun. You know guys, having fun is most important, but if you really want to improve, then give yourself a little structure too. Remember, speed versus control. And now get out there and get it good. And guys, if you like this tutorial and you don't wanna miss out on more windsurfing action, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. And let me know in the comments how flying on the board or flying the board over the water has been going for you. And then um, make sure to leave a thumbs up under the video. A big shout out goes out to Big E for collaborating with me uh, on this tutorial. I recently came across his website and YouTube channel and I just reached out to him and I believe he really has some great tips. So you'll find all of it in the video description and I see you in the next one.